In this video, we're going to take a look at a legal problem called search in rotated sorted array. So you're given an integer array nums sorted in ascending order and then and the uh, an integer target. Suppose the nums is rotated at some pivot unknown. So we need to, so to you beforehand, it was something like this. It might become something like this. So if the target is found in the array, return its target, or sorry, if you return its index, otherwise we're gonna return negative one if we cannot find the target. Um, here you can see we have a couple examples. We have an array and then the target is zero. So in this case, um, we just return its index. In this case, it's four. And then we also have another array where the target is three. Because three is not the, in the array, we're just gonna return negative one. And then we also have, um, array and target in this case there's there's no zero in the array which is going to return negative one and the numbers are all unique basically the length of the array is between one to this number five thousand right here so what we can do is we can just use a linear search to find the um target um targets index if we cannot find that we can just return negative one but that will give us linear time complexity and of course, what we can do instead is we can use binary search um, to improve this solution. So if we were to use binary search, one way we can do it is we can find our pivot point where this array start to um, pivot uh, or start to be, start to be rotated. Um, in this case, seven is the pivot point because after seven, you can see the numbers are, um, are, are are different or not continuous um, or not not bigger than this number right here it's not start to become um, non ascending order so what's going to happen is that we can find our pivot point using binary search so first step is to use binary search to find our pivot point so where the current uh, value is um, uh, the, the so the current value is the pivot point is when the the current values the uh, adjacent element which is zero in this case is um less than this current value so that's kind of like our pivot point we can use our binary search to do that um and then once we find our pivot point we can we what we will then know is that all the all the numbers that are on the left side of the pivot is between four and seven right so all the numbers that are on the right side of the pivot is between zero and two. And then what we can do is we can say, okay, well, if the target is three, then we know what we're defining, right? We know where to find it. If target is three, for example, we know that the target is now within this range and is also now within this range, then we can just return negative one. If the target is let's say four well we know that target is between here and here right well four is not within this range right here so we can just find it in here so we can just do binary search continuously until we find the number like that but this way it will give us um, a time complexity of uh, big o of they go of log n, so to log n, because we're we we first uh, have to use binary search to um, to find our pivot point, and once we find our pivot point, we also have to use binary search to uh, to decide which side of the array or which side should we search for either the left side of the pivot point or the right side of the pivot point so it's going to be um, two login but what we can do instead is we can do another way of binary search where we can uh, use binary search in just one pass so the idea is this what we're trying to do is we're trying to basically do binary search just to, just the way how we do binary search um, basically we're going to find our midpoint which is uh, low plus high minus low divided by two and then we go once we find our midpoint which is seven we're going to check to see 
if if seven is equal to target. If it's equal to target, we can just return this index. And if it's not equal to target, then we, what we're going to do is we're basically going to see if um, if target is actually well. First, we're going to see if um, if the 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 first uh, the nums at left or nums at low is actually less than or equal to the current midpoint. If that's the case, then what we know is that um, that all the numbers are between uh, nums at left and nums at mid is basically um, bigger than nums at left and less than nums at mid. Okay, what I'm trying to say here is that all the numbers that are between four and seven is actually less than uh, is actually less than seven and bigger than four because if there is a a a, part, uh, a, a situation where there's rotate uh, where there's a pivot or there's a road um, rotate it then what's going to happen is that nums at left is actually bigger than nums at mid then this is not an ascending order if it's ascending order then it will look like something like this to determine that, what we can do is just, like I said earlier, we're just going to check to see if nums at low is less than nums at um, less than or equal to nums at mid. If that's the case, then we're going to see if the target is actually within this range. If it's actually within this range, then we're going to search on the left. If it's not within this range, we're going to search on the right. Right. So that's one case. Okay, that's one case. The other case is where you know the nums at left is actually bigger than nums at middle so nums at midpoint if that's the case then what's going to happen is we're basically going to um, see if um, if the target that we're looking for well first of all we know that if nums at left is bigger than nums at left uh, nums at mid then we know that the right hand side is ascending order because they have to be one or the other Either is the left hand side is ascending order or the right hand side is ascending order. So if nums at left is bigger than nums at mid, then we know that the, the ascending order is on the right. And what's gonna happen is we're basically going to see okay, is target on the left uh, on the right? Is, is, is the target between two and five? Is, is, is it the case? If that's the case, then we're gonna search on the right, right? If not, we're going to search on the left. Sorry, just, just the left. Okay, so let's try to do this in code. So our first point, our first step is to create our low and high. So in this case, uh, we have our n is equal to nums.length. And then low is equal to 0. High is equal to n minus 1. And then while low is less than um, high, then what's going to happen is we're going to get our midpoint. So uh, let's just do less than or equal to low. So our midpoint is going to equal to low plus high minus low divided by 2. We're going to see if nums at mid is actually equal to target. If it's equal to target, then we're just going to return mid, okay? And if it does not, then just like I mentioned before, we're going to, we're going to see which side is ascending order by basically check to see if nums at left or nums at low is actually less than nums at mid. So nums at mid, if that's the case, then we know that, okay, um, the left side is ascending order. So if that's the case, then we're going to see is we're going to check to see if target is actually within the range on the left. By simply check to see if, if target is bigger than this, bigger than or equal to, to, to the left or to the nums at low. And less than the nums at mid, bigger than or equal to nums at low, and less than nums at mid. 
if that's the case, then we're going to get our high is equal to mid minus 1. Otherwise, we know that there, the, the, the target is not within this range, we will we'll just search on the right. So the left is equal to, it's not the left, sorry, low is equal to mid plus 1. Okay. Otherwise, otherwise, we have a situation where the the, the nums at left, so, so, sorry, nums at low is actually bigger than nums at middle. Then what we have to do is we have to see. Then we what we know is that the right hand side is going to be ascending order. Okay. This is this is the ascending order. The ascending order is going to be on the right. Now we're going to check to see if the target is actually within the ascending order subarray. If it is, then we're going to search on the right. If it's not, we guarantee that it's going to be on the left. Okay, so not guaranteed, but there could be also a situation where we don't find any. In that case, we just have to return negative one. So in this case, what we have to do is we have to see if nums at, sorry, if the target is actually within the, the uh, right side, the sorted array. Um, so if target is actually uh, less than or less than or equal to nums at high and target is bigger than nums at mid, okay, then what's going to happen is we're going to uh, basically search on the left, a uh, search on the right, right, because the target is actually within the range. Target is less than or equal to, to nums at high, and target is bigger than nums at middle. In that, in that case, we're going to uh, search on the right. So low is equal to mid plus one. Otherwise, what we're going to do is we're going to search on, on the left. So high is equal to mid minus one. So we're going to continue to do that until we search the element, if we cannot search the uh, find the element, we're just going to return negative one. Okay, so pretty simple. Let's try to run the code. Okay, submit. Uh, I think what we have to do is basically we have to make it equal to. So if nums at low is less than or equal to mid, just like I talked about before, if nums at low is less than or equal to mid because there could be a situation where we have only two elements then we're going to see if it, if we should search on the left or right so now let's try to run the code and submit and you can see we have success so basically this is how we um, basically complete the problem using binary search in just one pass so time complexity in this case Complexity in this case is going to be uh, a log in, uh, sorry, log in. So big O of log n, okay? And the space, space complexity is going to be uh, big O of 1, okay? So thank you for watching. That's all for this problem.